Raj Vidya King of Knowledge Chapter 8 Action in Knowledge of Krishna Namam karmani limpanti name karma phale spraha iti mam yo bi janati karma bhir na sabhatyate There is no work that affects me nor do I aspire for the fruits of action one who understands this truth about me also does not become entangled in the fruit of reactions of work bhagavad gita verse 4.14 the whole world is bound by karma we all know of the existence of microbes or germs which exist by the million within the measurement of 1 mm in the brahma samhita it is stated that beginning with the microbe which is called indra gopa up to indra the king of the heavenly planets all are bound by karma the reaction of work we all have to suffer or enjoy the reactions of our work be they good or bad as long as we have to suffer or enjoy these reactions we are bound to these material bodies by nature's arrangement the material body is given to the living entity for his suffering or enjoying different types of bodies are acquired for different purposes the body of a tiger is made for killing and eating raw meat similarly the hogs are made in such a way that they can eat stool and as human beings our teeth are made for eating vegetables and fruits all of these bodies are made according to the work done in past lives by the living entity our next bodies are being prepared according to the work which we are now doing but in the previously quoted verse shri krishna indicates that one who knows the transcendental nature of his activities becomes free from the reactions of activities our activities should be such that we will not again become entangled in this material world this can be made possible if we become krishna conscious by studying krishna learning of the transcendental nature of his activities and understanding how he behaves in this material world and in the spiritual world and krishna comes on this earth he is not like us he is totally transcendental we desire the fruits of our activities but krishna does not desire any fruits nor are there any reactions to his actions nor does he have any desire for fruitive activity name karma phale spraha when we enter into business we hope for profit and with that profit we hope to buy things that will make our life enjoyable whenever conditioned souls do something there is desire for enjoyment behind it but krishna has nothing to desire he is the supreme personality of god it and he is full of everything when krishna came on this earth he had many girlfriends and over 16000 wives and some people think that he was very sensual but this was not the fact we must understand the meaning of relationships with krishna in this material world we have many relationships as father mother wife or husband whatever relationship we find here is but a perverted reflection of the relationship we have with the supreme lord whatever we find in this material world is born of the absolute truth but here it is pervertedly reflected in time whatever relationship we have with krishna goes on if we have a relationship and friendship that friendship is eternal and continues from life to life in the material world a friendship exists for a few years and then breaks therefore it is called perverted temporal or unreal if we make our friendship with krishna it will never break if we make our master krishna we will never be cheated if we love krishna as our son he will never die 
If we love Krishna as our lover, he will be the best of all and there will be no separation. Because Krishna is the Supreme Lord, he is unlimited and has an unlimited number of devotees. Some are trying to love him as lover or husband and therefore Krishna accepts this role. In whatever way we approach Krishna, he will accept us as he states in Bhagavad Gita. Ye yathamam prapadyante tamstataiva bhajamyaham mama vartmanu vartante manushya partha sarvashah All of them, as they surrender unto me, I reward accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects, O son of Pritha. Bhagavad Gita 4.11 The gopis or covered girlfriends of Krishna underwent tremendous penances in their previous lives to attain Krishna as their husband. Similarly, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Shukadeva Goswami says that those boys who were playing with Krishna had undergone great penances and austerities in their previous lives in order to acquire Krishna as a playmate. Thus, the playmates, associates and wives of Krishna are not ordinary living entities. Because we have no idea of Krishna consciousness, we take his activities as triflings, but actually they are sublime. All perfection of our desires is there. Whatever desires we have constitutionally will be perfectly fulfilled when we are in Krishna consciousness. Krishna did not need any friends to play with him, nor did he desire a single wife. We take on a wife because we have some desire to fulfill. But Krishna is complete in himself, Purnam. A poor man may desire to have a thousand dollars in the bank, but a rich man who has millions has no such desire. If Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, why should he have desires? Rather, he fulfills the desires of others. Man proposes and God disposes. If Krishna had any desire, he would be imperfect, for he would be lacking something. Therefore, he says that he has no desire to fulfill. As Yogeshwara or as master of all yogis, whatever he wills is immediately realized. There is no question of desire. He becomes a husband or lover or friend just to fulfill the desires of his devotees. If we accept Krishna as friend, master, son or lover, we will never be frustrated. Every living entity has a specific relationship with Krishna, but at present, this relationship is covered. As we advance in Krishna consciousness, it will be revealed. Although the Supreme Lord is full and has nothing to do, he works in order to set an example. He is not bound to his activities in the material world. And one who knows this also becomes free from reactional activities. Evam Jnatvakritam Karma Purvai Rapimu Mukshubihi Kuru Karmaiva Tasmatvam Purvai Purvataram Kritam All the liberated souls in ancient times acted with this understanding and so attained liberation. Therefore, as the ancients, you should perform your duty in this divine consciousness. Bhagavad Gita verse 4.15 The process of Krishna consciousness requires that we follow in the footsteps of the great Acharyas who have attained success in spiritual life. If one acts by following the example set by great Acharyas, sages, devotees and enlightened kings, who have performed karma yoga in their lives, he shall also become free. On the battlefield of Kurukshetra, Arjuna was very much afraid of being entangled in his activities by engaging in warfare. Krishna therefore assured him that if he fought for his sake, 
there would be no possibility of entanglement kim karma kim akarmeti kavayopyatra mohitaha tatte karma pravakshyami yajnyatva moksha se shubhat even the intelligent are bewildered in determining what is action and what is an action now i shall explain to you what action is knowing which you shall be liberated from all sins bhagavad gita verse 4.16 people are actually confused as to what is work karma and what is not work a karma krishna here indicates that even great scholars kavayah are bewildered about the nature of work it is necessary to know which activities are genuine and which are not which are bona fide and which are not which are prohibited and which are not if we understand the principle of work we can become free from material bondage it is therefore necessary to know how to conduct work so that when we leave the material body we will no longer be forced to take another but will be free to enter into the spiritual sky the principle of proper work is clearly stated by shri krishna in the last verse of the 11th chapter mat karma krin mat paramo mad bhakta sang varjitah nirvaira sarva bhuteshu yasamamiti pandava my dear arjuna one who is engaged in my pure devotional service free from the contamination of previous activities and from mental speculation who is friendly to every living entity certainly comes to me bhagavad gita verse 11.55 this one verse is sufficient for understanding the essence of bhagavad gita one must be engaged in my work and what is this work it is indicated in the last instruction in bhagavad gita in which krishna tells arjuna to surrender unto him bhagavad gita verse 18.66 By the example of Arjuna we have to learn that we should only perform work which is sanctioned by Krishna this is the mission of human life but we do not know it because of our ignorance we engage in so much work which is connected with the bodily or material conception of life Krishna wanted Arjuna to fight and although Arjuna did not want to fight he fought because krishna desired it we have to learn to follow this example of course krishna was present to tell arjuna what his work was but what about us shri krishna was personally directing arjuna to act in such and such a way but just because krishna is not personally present before us we should not assume that there is no direction indeed there is direction in the last chapter of bhagavad gita the proper work which we are to perform is given ya idam paramam guhyam mad bhakteshva vidasyati bhaktim mai param kritpa mami vaishatya samshayah na cha tasman manushyeshu kaschin me priya krit tamah bhavita na cha me tasmat anya priyataro bhuvi o one who explains the supreme secret to the devotees devotional services guaranteed and at the end he will come back to me there is no servant in this world more dear to me than he nor will there ever be one more dear Bhagavad Gita verses 18.68 to 69 It is therefore incumbent upon us to preach the method of Bhagavad Gita and make people Krishna conscious people are actually suffering for want of Krishna consciousness we should all engage in spreading the science of Krishna for the benefit of the whole world 
Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came with this mission of teaching Krishna consciousness and he said that regardless of one's position, if he teaches Krishna consciousness, he is to be considered a spiritual master. Both Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam are filled with information on how to become Krishna conscious. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu selected these two books and requested that people in all corners of the world spread the signs of Krishna in every town and village. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was Krishna himself and we should take this to be Krishna's indication of our proper work. But we should be careful to present Bhagavad Gita as it is without personal interpretation or motivation. Some people present interpretations of Bhagavad Gita, but we should present the words as they are spoken by Sri Krishna. One who works for Krishna may appear to be working like anyone else in the material world, but this is not the case. Arjuna may have fought just like an ordinary military man, but because he fought in Krishna consciousness, he was free from the entanglement of his activities. In this way, his work, although appearing material, was not material at all. Any action sanctioned by Krishna, regardless of what it may be, has no reaction. Fighting may not be a very nice thing, but sometimes, as in the case of the battle of Kurukshetra, it is an absolute necessity. On the other hand, we may perform work which may be very altruistic or humanitarian in the opinion of the world and yet be bound to material activity. So it is not the action itself which is important, but the consciousness in which the action is carried out. Karmano hyapi bodhavyam, bodhavyam cha vikarmanaha, a karmanas cha bodhavyam, gahana karmano gatihi. The intricacies of action are very hard to understand. Therefore, one should know properly what action is, what forbidden action is, and what inaction is. Bhagavad Gita, verse 4.17. The path of karma is very intricate. Therefore, we should understand the distinctions between karma, akarma and vikarma. If we simply engage in Krishna consciousness, everything becomes clear. Otherwise, we will have to make distinctions between what we should do and what we should not do in order to not become entangled. In the ordinary course of life, we unknowingly break some law and have to suffer the consequences. Similarly, the laws of nature are very strict and stringent and they accept no excuse. It is a law of nature that fire burns and even if a child touches it, he will be burned despite his ignorance and innocence. Thus. We have to choose our course of action very carefully lest the stringent laws of nature react to bind us to suffering. It is therefore necessary to understand what work to do and what work to avoid. The word karma refers to prescribed duties. The word vikarma refers to activities which are against one's prescribed duties. And the word akarma refers to activities which have no reaction at all. In the execution of akarmic activities, there may appear to be some reactions, but in actuality, there are not. When we work under the directions of Krishna, this is actually the case. There are no reactions. If we take it upon ourselves to kill someone, we are subject to capital punishment by the state government. Our actions are then called vikarma for they are against prescribed actions. If, however, the government drafts us into the army and we engage in battle and kill someone, we do not suffer the reactions and this is called a karma. In the one case we are acting according to our own whims, 
and in the other we are acting under the direction of the government similarly when we act under the direction of krishna our actions performed are called a karma for that kind of activity has no reaction karmanya karmaya pashyet akarmani ch karmaya sabuddhiman manushyeshu sayukta krishna karma krit one who sees inaction and action and action and inaction is intelligent among men and he is in the transcendental position although engaged in all sorts of activities bhagavad gita 4.18 one who can actually see that despite activities there are no karmic reactions who understands the nature of a karma actually sees things as they are the word akarmani refers to one who is trying to avoid the reactions of karma by dovetailing his activities in krishna consciousness although one may perform all kinds of activities he is free on the battlefield of kurukshetra arjuna engaged in fighting and those on the side of duryodhana also engaged in fighting we must understand how it is that arjuna is free from reaction whereas duryodhana is not externally we can see that both parties are engaged in fighting but we should understand that arjuna is not bound by reactions because he is fighting under the order of krishna thus when we see someone working in krishna consciousness we should understand that his work does not carry any reaction one who can see such work and understand it is to be considered very intelligent sabuddhiman the technique is not so much in seeing what a person is doing but in understanding why he is doing it actually arjuna was engaged in very unpleasant activity on the battlefield but because he was in krishna consciousness he suffered no reaction we may be performing some action which we may consider to be very good work but if we do not perform it in krishna consciousness we have to suffer the reactions from the material point of view arjuna's initial decision not to fight was a good one but from the spiritual point of view it was not when we do pious work we get certain results we may take a birth in a very good family in the family of a brahmana or a wealthy man we may become very rich or very learned or we may become very beautiful on the other hand if we do impious work we may have to take birth in a low class family or animal family or become illiterate or foolish or very ugly Although we engage in very pious work and take a good birth we will still be subject to the stringent laws of action and reaction our principal aim should be to escape the laws of this material world if we don't understand this we will become attracted by aristocratic families wealth or a good education or a beautiful body we should come to understand that despite having all these facilities for material life we are not free from birth old age disease and death to caution us of this shri krishna warns us in bhagavad gita a brahma bhuvana loka punaravarti norjuna mam petya tu kaunteya punarjanmana vidyate from the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest all are places of misery wherein repeated birth and death take place bhagavad gita verse 8.16 even on brahma loka the highest planet in the material universe repetition of birth and death are also present we have to go to krishna's planet in order to be free from this it may be very nice to be a rich man or a beautiful man but how long shall we remain such that is not our permanent life we may remain learned rich and beautiful for 50 60 or at most 100 years but real life is not for 50 or 100 years nor a thousand years nor even a million years 
we are eternal and we have to attain our eternal life that we have not attained it is a whole problem that problem can be solved when we are krishna conscious if we leave this material body in krishna consciousness we will no longer have to return to the material world the point is to avoid this material existence altogether it is not a question of improving our condition in the material world in prison a man may want to improve his condition to become a first class prisoner and the government may give him a status but no sane man will become satisfied by becoming an a class prisoner he should desire to get out of the prison altogether in the material world some of us are a class b class or c class prisoners but in any case we are all prisoners real knowledge does not consist in simply getting an ma or phd but in understanding these basic problems of existence yasya sarve samarambha kama sankalpa varchitaha jnanagni dagda karmanam tam ahu panditam budaha one is understood to be in full knowledge whose every act is devoid of desire for sense gratification he is said by sages to be a worker whose fruit of action is burned up by the fire of perfect knowledge bhagavad gita verse 4.19 the word panditam means learned and budaha means well versed in the 10th chapter we also find the word budaha in the verse buddha bhava samanvitaha bhagavad gita verse 10.8 according to bhagavad gita one may not be a learned man just because he has received a lot of education from a university bhagavad gita says that he is a learned man who can see everything on an equal level vidya vinaya sampanne brahmane kavihastini shuni chaiva shvapake cha pandita samadarshinah the humble sage by virtue of true knowledge sees with equal vision a learned and gentle brahmana a cow an elephant a dog and a dog eater outcast bhagavad gita verse 5.18 in india according to vedic civilization a brahmana who is learned is considered to be the top most man in human society the pandita who is learned and gentle see such a brahmana on the same level with a dog or an outcast who eats dogs in other words he sees no distinctions between the highest and the lowest is this to say that being a learned brahmana is no better than being a dog no that is not so but the pandita sees them as the same because he does not see the skin but the spirit one who has learned the art of seeing the same spirit soul within every living being is considered to be a pandita for in actuality every living being is a spiritual spark part and parcel of the complete spirit soul the spiritual spark is the same in all but it is covered by different dresses an honored man may come in a very shabby dress but this does not mean that he should be dishonored in bhagavad gita these material bodies are likened unto dresses which are worn by the spirit soul vasam si jirna niyata vihaya navani grena tinaro parani तथा शरीराणि विहाय जीर्णा न्यन्यानि सम्याति नवानि देहि as a person puts on new garments giving up old ones similarly the soul accepts new material bodies giving up the old and useless ones bhagavad gita verse 2.22 whenever we see any living entity we should think here is a spirit soul any one who can understand such a spiritual vision of life as pandita chanakya pandita gives the standard for education or the qualification for a pandita in this way the learned man sees all women with the exception of his wife as his mother 
he sees all material possessions as garbage in the street and he looks on the sufferings of others as he would look on them in himself lord buddha taught that we should not even hurt animals by word or deed this is the qualification for a pandita and this should be the standard of life it is therefore to be understood that one is to be considered educated in accordance with his vision of life and his activity in accordance with that vision not by his academic degrees this is the understanding of the word pandita from bhagavad gita similarly the word buddha specifically refers to one who is well versed in the study of scripture the results of such realization and scriptural learning are thus described in bhagavad gita aham sarvasya prabhavo matha sarvam pravartate iti matva bhajante mam buddha bhava samanvitah i am the source of all spiritual and material worlds everything emanates from me the wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts bhagavad gita verse 10.8 the well versed person or buddha is one who has understood that krishna is the origin of all emanations whatever we happen to see is but an emanation of krishna for millions and millions of years sunshine has been emanating from the sun and yet the sun is as it is similarly all material and spiritual energies are coming from krishna as a result of knowing this one becomes a devotee of krishna thus one who knows that he must work in krishna consciousness who no longer desires to enjoy this material world is actually learned everyone is working in the material world due to lust karma but the wise man is free from the dictations of this lust kama sankalpa varjitah how is this possible Nyanagni dagdha karmanam the fire of knowledge burns up all reactions of sinful activities it is the most potent of purifiers our lives have meaning and direction only in so far as we strive to attain this transcendental knowledge of krishna consciousness rajavidya which is the king of all knowledge